Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 10 to 14, Proverbs 29, and Psalm 89. Let's get started. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know something about our people who live longer. They are all led by the cloud. They all walk through the Red Sea. They are all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They ate. They all ate the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual water. They drank from the spiritual water. That went with him. That rock was Christ. But, but God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattering in the desert. Now those things happen as an exa- as examples for us. <clears throat> they are supposed to keep us from wanting evil things. The people of Israel wanted these evil things. So they didn't worship statues of God, as some of them did. It is when the people sat down to eat and drink. Then they got up to dance wildly in front of their God. We should not commit sexual sin as some of them did. In one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test the Messiah, as some of them did. They were killed by snakes. Don't speak against God. That's what some of the people of Israel did. And they were killed by the destroying angel. Those things happened to them as examples for us. They were written down to warn us. That's because we are living at the time when God's work is being complete. So be careful. When you think you are standing firm, you might fall. You are tempted in the same way. All other human beings are. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted any more than you can take. But when you are tempted, God will give you a way out. Then you'll be able to deal with it. My dear friend, run away from statues of God. Don't worship them. I'm talking to people who are reasonable. Judge for yourselves what I say. We give thanks for the cup at the Lord's Supper. When we do, aren't we sharing in the blood of Christ? When we break the bread, aren't we sharing in the body of Christ? Just as there's one loaf, so we, who are many, have our one body. We all share the one loaf. Think about the people of Israel. Don't those who eat the offering share in the altar? Do I mean that food sacrificed to a statue of a god is anything? Do I mean that a statue of a god is anything? No. But what is sacrificed by those who worship statues of gods is really sacrificed to demons. It is not sacrificed to the God. I don't want you to be sharing with demons. You can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You can't have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to make the Lord jealous? Aren't we? Are we stronger than he is? You say, I don't have the right to do anything, but not everything is helpful. And didn't you say, I have the right to do anything, but not everything builds us up. No one should look out for their own interests. Instead, they should look out for the interests of others. Eat anything sold in the meat market. Don't know if, it, if, if it's right or wrong. Scripture says, the earth belongs to the Lord, and so does everything in it. Suppose a number of people invites you to a meal and, and you want to go. Then eat anything that is put in front of you. Don't ask it if it's right or wrong. But suppose someone says to you, this food has been sacrificed to a statue of God. Then don't eat it. Keep in mind the good of the person who taught you. And don't eat it because of the sense of what is right and wrong. I'm talking about the other person's sense of what is right and wrong, not yours. Why is my freedom being judged by what someone else thinks? Suppose I give thanks when I eat. Then why should I be blamed for eating what I thank God for? So eat and drink and do everything else for the glory of God. Don't do anything that causes another person to drink or fall. It doesn't matter if that person is a Jew or a Greek or a member of God's church. Follow my example. I try to please everyone in my every way. I'm not looking out for what is good in me. Good for me. I'm looking out for the interests of others. I do it so that they might be safe. Follow my example. Just as I follow the example of Christ. And I praise you for being faithful and remembering me. I also praise you for staying true to the teachings of the past. You've stayed true to them. Just as I give them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered brings shame on his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with their head uncovered brings shame on her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. What if a woman does not cover her head? She might as well have her hair cut off. But it is shameful for her to cut her hair or shave her head. So she should cover her head. A man should not cover his head. 
is the likeness and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. Man did not come from woman. Woman came from man. Just a man was not created for woman. Woman was created for man. That's why a woman should have authority over her own head. She should have this because of the angels. But here's now. Here's how things are for those who belong to the Lord. Woman is not independent of man, and man is not independent of woman. Woman came from man, and man is born from woman. <clears throat> but everything comes from God. You be the judge. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God without covering her head? Suppose a man has long hair. Doesn't the very nature of things teach you that it is shameful? And suppose a woman has long hair. Doesn't the very nature of things teach you that it is her glory? Long hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to argue about this, we don't have any other practice. And God's church is so deep. In the following matters, I don't pray here in meetings do more harm than good. First, here's what people are telling me. When you come together as a church, you take sides. And in some ways, I believe it. Do you really think you need to take sides? Do you probably think God favors one side? Over the other. So when you come together, it is not the Lord's supper you eat. As you eat, some of you go ahead and eat your own private meals. Because of this, one person stays hungry and another gets drunk. <clears throat> Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? You are shaming those in the church who have nothing. <clears throat> do you think so, though, of God's church, that you do this? What should I say to you? The, so, should I praise you? Certainly not about the Lord's supper. I passed on to you what I have received from the Lord. <coughs> on the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, This is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. You eat the bread and drink the cup. When you do this, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Eat the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in the right way. Don't do it in a way that isn't worthy of him. If you do, you will be guilty. You'll be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone should take a careful look at themselves before they eat the bread, bread and drink from the cup. Whoever eats and drinks must recognize the body of Christ. If they don't, judgment will come upon them. That is why many of you are weak and sick. That is why a number of you have died. We should think more carefully about what we are doing. Then we would not be found guilty for this. When the Lord judges us in this way, he corrects us. Then in the end, we will not be judged along with the rest of the world. My brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, you should all eat together. No one who is hungry should eat something at home. Then when you come together, you will not be judged. When I come, I will give you more directions. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know that at one time you were unbelievers. You were somehow drawn away to worship statues of gods that couldn't even speak. So I want you to know that no one who is speaking with the help of God's Spirit said, May Jesus be cursed. And without the help of the Holy Spirit, no one can say, Jesus is Lord. They are different kinds of gifts, but they are all given to believers by the same Spirit. They are different ways to serve. But they all come from the same Lord. There are different ways the Spirit works, but the same God is working in all these ways and in all people. The Holy Spirit is given to each of us in a special way. That is for the good of all. To some people, the Spirit gives a message of wisdom. To others, the same Spirit gives a message of knowledge. To others, the same Spirit gives faith. To others, that same Spirit gives. To others, that one Spirit gives gifts of healing. To others, he gives the power to do miracles. To others, he gives the power to. To others, he gives the ability to prophesy. There are, to others, he gives the ability to tell the spirit of God. To others, he gives the ability to speak in different like, kinds of languages they are not known before. And to still others, he gives the ability to explain what was said in those languages. All the gifts are produced by one in me and the same spirit. He gives gifts to each person, just as he decides. There is one body. But it has many parts, but all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. We were all baptized by one spirit, and so we are formed into one body. It didn't matter whether we were Jews or Gentiles. 
The slaves are free people. We are all given the same spirit to drink, so the body is not made up of just one part. There is many parts. Suppose the foot says, foot says, I am not a hand, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being a part of the body. And suppose the ear says, I am not an eye, so I don't belong to the body. By saying this, it cannot stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be. If all the parts were the same, how could there be a body? As it is, there are many parts, but there is only one body. The eye can't say to the head, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, it is just the opposite. The parts of the body are can't, that seem to be weaker are the ones we can't do it without. The parts that we think are less important, we treat with special honor. The private parts aren't shown, but they are treated with special care. The parts that can be shown do not need special care. The God has put together all the parts of the body, and he has given more to the parts that didn't have it. In that way, the parts of the body will not take sides. All of them will take care of one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part shares, it, shares in its strength. You have the body of Christ. Each of you is part of it. Is a part of it. First, God has placed apostles in the church. Second, he has placed prophets in the church. Third, he has placed teachers in the church. Then he has given to the church miracles and gifts of healing. He also has given the gift of helping others and the gift of guiding the church. God also has given the gift of speaking in different like, different kinds of languages. Is everyone an apostle? Is everyone a prophet? Is everyone a teacher? Do all works do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in languages they not know? Do all explain what is said in those languages? But above all, you should want the most, the more important gift. But now I'll show you the best way. Of it. Suppose I will, suppose I speak in the languages of human beings or angels. If I don't have love, I am only a loud or a noisy symbol. Suppose I have the gift of a prophecy. Suppose I can understand all the secret things of God and know everything about. It. And suppose I don't have love to move mountains. If I don't have love, I am nothing at all. Suppose I give everything I do to poor people. And suppose I give myself over to a difficult place so I can pray. If I don't have love, I get nothing at all. Love is peace. Love is kind. It does not want what belongs to us. It does not pray. It is not proud. It does not dishonor other people. It does not look down for its own interests. It does not easily become angry. It does not keep track of other people's wrongs. Love is not happy with evil, but it is full of joy when the truth is spoken. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. But prophecy will pass away. Speaking in languages that have not been known before will end. And knowledge will pass away. What we know now is not complete. What we prophesy now is not perfect. But when what is complete comes, the things that are not complete will pass away. When I was a child, I talked about the child. I, I didn't like the child. I had the understanding of the child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. Now we, now we see only a dim likeness of things. It is as if we were seeing them in a foggy mirror. But someday we'll see things. You will see face to face. What I know now is not good. But someday I will know complete, just as God knows me completely. The three most important things to have are faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of them is the gift of people who follow the way of follow the way of love. You should also want the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And gifts. Most of all, you should want the gift of prophecy. Anyone who speaks in a language they had not known before doesn't speak to people. They speak only to God. In fact, no one understands them. What they say by the Spirit remains a mystery. But the person who prophesies speaks to people. That person prophesies to make people stronger, to give them money, and to comfort them. Anyone who speaks in other languages builds only themselves. But that, but the person who prophesies builds up the church. I would like the one who speaks in the other language, but I would rather have you prophesy. <clears throat> the person who prophesies is more helpful than those who speak in other languages. But that is not the case if, if someone explains what was said in the other language. Then the whole church can be filled. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, 
Suppose I wanted to come to you and speak in another language. What good would I be to you? None. I would need to come with new truth or knowledge. Or would I need to come with a prophecy or a teaching? Here are some examples. Certain objects make sense. Let's take a flute or a harp. No one will know what the tune is unless different notes are playing. Also, if the trumpet calls isn't, he will get ready for battle. It's the same with you. You must speak words that people understand. If you don't, no one will know what you're saying. You'll be just, you'll just, you'll just be speaking into the air. It is true that there are all kinds of languages in the world, and they all have. But I don't understand what someone says. I am a stranger to the person speaking, and that person is a stranger to me. It's the same with you. You want the gifts, gifts of the spirit. So try to do your best in using gifts that build up the church. So here's what the person who speaks in languages they did not know before should do. They should pray that they can explain what they say. If I pray in another language, my spirit prays, but my mind is not praying. So what should I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will pray with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. Suppose you are praising God in the spirit, and suppose there are people to me who want to know what's going on. How can you, they say amen when you give thanks? They don't know what you're saying. You are suddenly giving thanks, but no one else is being, being filled up. I thank God that I speak in other languages more than all of you do. In the church, I wouldn't want to speak 10,000 words in an unfamiliar language. I'd rather speak one in a language people can understand. And then I could be teaching. Then I would be teaching others. With senses, just stop thinking like you're you like babies as far as this concern. But be grown up in your thinking. And the word is written. And through the lips of outsiders, I'll speak to the people. But even they will not listen to me. And that is what the Lord says. So, speaking in other languages is a sign for those who don't believe. It is not a sign for those who do believe. But prophecy is not for those who don't believe. It is for those who believe. Suppose the whole church comes to get them to the languages and other languages. And suppose visitors or unbelievers come to When they say you are out of your mind, but suppose unbelievers or visitors come in while everyone is prophesying, then they will feel guilty about their sin. They will be judged by all. The secrets of their hearts will be brought out into the earth. They will fall down and worship God. They will exclaim, God is really here among you. Brothers and sisters, what should we say then? When we come together, each of you brings something. When you bring a hymn or, te or a teaching or a message from God, you bring a message in another language or explain what was said in that language. Everything must be done to build up the church. No more than two or three people should speak in another language, and they should speak one at a time. If then someone must explain what was said. If there is no one to explain, the person speaking should keep quiet in the church. They can speak to themselves and to God. Only two or three prophets are supposed to speak. Others should decide if what is being said is true. What if a message from God comes to someone who is also a sinner? Then the one who is speaking should stop. Those who prophesy can all take turns. In that way, everyone can be taught and be given turn. Those who prophesy should control their speaking. God is not a God of disorder. He is a God of peace. Just as in all the churches, he makes people. Women should remain silent in church meetings. They are not allowed to speak. They must follow the lead of those who are in authority. Just as the law says, if they have a question about something, they, they should ask their own husbands at home. It is shameful for a woman to speak in a church meeting. Or did the word of God begin with you? Why are you the only people who is reached? Suppose anyone thinks they are a prophet. Or suppose they think they are given by the Holy Spirit. They should accept that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. But anyone who does not recognize this will not be recognized. Brothers and sisters, you should run the prophecy. And then stop people from saying that you just say that they are full. But everything that should be done in a proper and orderly way. Proverbs 21. Whoever still won't obey after being warned many times will suddenly be destroyed. Nothing can say, when those who do like are strong, the people of life 
But when those you do wrong become rulers, the people go. A man who loves wisdom makes his father. But a man who spends time with prostitutes makes his father's will. By doing what is best, he makes a country suffer. But those who only want money tear it down. Those who only pretend to pray for them are spreading a net to catch them by the sea. Simple people are trapped by their own sin. Because only people shout for joy and are glad. Those who do what is right want to treat other people well. But those who do what is wrong don't care about them. Those who make fun of others stir up a sin. But wise people turn under a wall. Suppose a wise person goes to court with a foolish boy. Then the, fo then the foolish person gets mad and picks fun. And there's no peace. Murder is hate on the people. They try to kill those who do what is Wise people let their enemy in one. But wise people keep themselves under their control. If no one is listening to them, all their officials become free. The, the Lord gives sight to the eyes of poor people and those who choose not to stop. That's what they both have in common. If a king judges poor people fairly, his dream will always be secure. But if a child is corrupted, they become wise. But a child who is not corrupted will bring shame to them up. When those who do wrong go strong, others say the same. But those who do right will see one the If you corrupt me to them, they will bring you they will give you peace. They will bring you the delight to you just so. There's, when, where there are no mysteries with God, people don't get trouble. So. The blessed is the one who obeys wisdom and sin structure. Servants can't be corrected only by what? Even if they answer, they would obey. Have you seen the God's song? Have you seen the song you speak to? There is no hope for a foolish people than for that person. The servant who has been spoiled for him will have no respect for you later on. And every person stirs a fight. And a person with a bad temper can make any sense. I bring the person to but those whose spirits are not even real. To help a thief is to become your enemy. When you go to court, you won't dare to say anything. If you're afraid of thieves, you'll trust me. If you trust in me, you'll keep you safe. Many people want to be the rule, but only the Lord sees that people are to the world. Those who do what is right hate dishonor people. Those who do what is right hate dishonor people. Psalm 89. Psalm 89. Lord, I'll sing about your great life. For what time to come, I'll tell them that. I will tell how they keep you. I will tell everyone that your love stands for them. I will tell them that you are always faithful, even in heaven itself. He said, Here's my covenant, I have made with my children. Here's the promise I have made to my servant David. I will make your family like the king for I will make the king secure for all time to come. Lord, the heavens praise you for your wonderful deed. And the holy angels gather together. They praise you for how faithful you are. He in the sky is above the chimpanzees. He who among the angels is my favorite. God is highly respected in the most holy angel. He is more wonderful than all those who are around him. You God and rules in him. He was like you. You are mine. You are faithful in everything you do. You rule over the storms. When it's away, you rise up. You calm them down. You crush the chip and kill the head of people. With your powerful arm, you stand your enemies. The heavens are one The earth is yours. You make the world and everything that's, that is in it. You feed it everything from north to south. Mount Tabor and Mount Hermon seem to use it. Your arm is powerful. Your hand is strong. Your right hand is weak. Your kingdom is good on what is right. Your faith, your faith and love leads the way in front of you. The star is your blood to shout praise to you. Lord, they live in the light of your kindness. All day long, they are full of joy because of who you are. They celebrate the fact that you do this, but you do need glory and give them strength. You are pleased to honor our king. Our king is like a sheep that keeps us safe. He belongs to you. He belongs to the Holy One. If you once go to your faithful people in a vision, he said, I have given strength to you, a soul. I have raised up a young man from among my people. I found my servant here. I have pulled my sacred oil on the head. My powerful hand will keep him going. My mighty arm will give him strength. No enemy will have, will have the victory over him. No enemy will fight. No enemy will treat him back. I will crush the king's enemies. I'll completely destroy him. I'll love him and be faithful to him. Because of me, his power will increase. I'll give him a great kingdom. It will reach from the Mediterranean Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. You will call out to him. You are my father. You are my God. You are my rock and say, I'll also make him my oldest son. And then all the kings of the world, he will be the best of him. I'll continue to love his world. I will never break my covenant with him. I will make his kingdom and his king forever. His kingdom will last as long as the heavens. What if his sons turn away from my ears and do not fall? What if they disobey my ears and fail to keep my kingdom? Then I will punish them for all their sins. I will strike them with a the gift. I will beat them for the evil act. But I will not stop loving them. I will always be faithful to them. I will not break my hand. I will not break back from my heart. Once and for all, I have made a promise. It is based on my heart. And I will not lie to them. My family love will continue to 
But you know what lost is one of the sun? You lost forever like you that bacon to the same stuff. The, you have turned your back on your own team. You have been very angry with you. You've broken the covenant. You've made the You've turned your servants kind into the death. You've broken through the rules around the sea. You've completely destroyed the secure places. All these you cross by have carried off what you belong to. His name is Nicholas. You have made his enemies so. You have made all of them. You have made us so useless. You have not helped them. You have not helped them in that. You have come into the court. You have not destroyed them. You have cut short the days for them. You have covered them with shame. Lord, how long will you hide yourself? Will you be How long will you end your burning of heart? Remember how short that is. You have created all people for such a useless help. Who can live and not die? Who can escape and have all the great? But where is great that you used to have? You basically promised it today. But remember how my enemies have made fun of me. I had to put up with my own words to all the nations. Lord, your enemies have said many things. Many things. They have laughed at everything you are going to do. And praise to the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your head. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as you wish to forgive our debts. He has limited to temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For you the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.